Spearfish, South Dakota. And we are along 14A, which is the Spearfish Canyon Road. Behind me is Bridal Veil Falls. It is stunningly gorgeous. Take a look. Let's watch as someone tries to cross the creek. I can actually feel the water from the fall spraying over here towards me. It's pretty cool. He is using his very expensive camera tripod as a hiking pole. Yes, it works. It's a gorgeous day. Maybe about 60 degrees, 65 degrees and sunny and just beautiful. I think it's about October 25th, so should be turning to winter soon. But right now we just have all of these amazing colors. And Mr. McGarvey. Hello, Papa. Hello. So I'm here with our new friend Eric. We are in Spearfish Canyon and we met him down the road at Bridal, Del Bridal Veil Falls. Um, he showed us a family of mountain goats and now he's going to tell us a little bit about the osprey that lives here. We've got a family of osprey in this nest up here. It's been active about year round for like the last five years. Um, they usually have two offspring. Um, it's pretty cool because they teach the offspring to come out of the nest and fish here in the, in the creek. Um, this creek doesn't freeze over. Really? Yep. Uh, Even though the waterfalls freeze over. Yep. Crazy. This, well, the creek will get some ice, but it's from the bottom up. Okay. It'll freeze the bottom of the creek hmm. upwards. The top, top of the, top of the creek never freezes. Still, it's flowing year round. Hmm. Um, the osprey feed out of here, pull some decent sized fish out. It's kind of neat watching them. They'll either snag a fish like, like an eagle does. Right or they'll go they'll dive into the creek that's got to be cool to see and then yeah um they're, they're pretty neat doing it and they're not they're not bashful <laughs> they'll do it with people watching um they'll sit up there in the nest and just hang out and eat so fun they'll they'll eat more than once a day and they're a blast. They're fun to watch. Yeah. Um, fun to photograph too. I bet. I bet. This is really cool out here. Yeah. Uh, this is the only osprey nest in here. There's, I don't know, I know of like five. We have a resident population of osprey, but another another migration shows up in May. Nice. Um, we also have a, a resident population of bald eagles. Right. That don't really like humans <laughs> so they stay buried back in the forest which is really cool they'll come out and feed uh, and that's their, I don't know their numbers I've seen maybe half a dozen but wow. I know there's a whole lot more than that right we have the winter migration that shows up and we don't know how many there are nor where they come from or where they go to when they leave in March hmm. None of them are tagged, right. and none of them have GPS tags, uh, so we don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is frustrating. Um, we'd love to know where they where they come from and where they go to. Sure. Uh, just for population control, we'd like to know. Yeah. We'd like to know numbers. Um, I've been taking your pictures. I've been photographing bald eagles for. 12 years. That's pretty awesome. And they're, they're an absolute blast. The one at the hatchery, the male, the 25 plus year old male, um, his mate was killed by a, a red-tailed hawk oh. four, three years, four years ago. 
and he's been bringing their daughter oh. with him. Um, she's an adult now. She's six years old. Oh. They, they, he and his mate have been we're bringing her here. She was about a year old. Wow, I bet that was pretty neat so to see. So that, that was I've been watching them and watching her and the progression from a year old up to and I've been watching her every year and as a as an adult. You know, cool. when she gets her white head and yellow beak and it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Sounds like a great place to live up here. Oh, this is an absolute blast here. But, uh, yeah, we get some nasty weather. We get sub-zero <laughs> temps in January and February where average is 20 below. Wow. But a little too cold for me. Uh, it's <laughs> you learn to live with it. Yeah. The eagles are the are the most active during that time. Oh. It's kind of the colder the better. <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they they really don't freeze. <laughs> they'll sit on a branch and they'll puff all their feathers out. Oh. You know, they'll shake themselves out and they'll puff all the feathers out, and that's insulation. Nice. So, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. And then they've got a, a membrane over their eyes. It's called the nictating lens. Hmm. It'll, it'll cover their eyes. The sharks have them, too. Um, it'll cover their eyes, and it's a protective, but they can see through it. Oh. It's translucent, so that's it's kind of neat. cool, yeah. Kind of neat. You learn a lot about quality. Yeah. Right here. They're fun. They're it's fun to watch. Fun. fun to photograph. They have. Anybody who says that bald eagles don't have a memory, they don't remember people or, or that. I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ because I've been watching this one at the hatchery for 14 years. He remembers me. That's pretty cool. Um. They have phenomenal memories. They, they have personality to us. Oh. Every one of them is different. Um, some of them are, don't care for humans and they <laughs> stay away. Right. Others are, they're, they're inherently curious. <laughs> and they'll come around and they'll, they'll look at you and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll they're kind of playful. Right. Um, but they're, they're fun. That, that's the only way to really put it. Sounds like a passion. So this is why we travel. We get to make meet cool people like Eric. Thanks for sharing your stories with us. My pleasure. We are in Deadwood, South Dakota. We're, we were boondocking last night, kind of up in the Black Hills a bit. So today we're coming out of the hills to get away from the snow that's supposed to be coming in. We're gonna visit a historic cemetery and then we're gonna visit Saloon 10. Saloon 10? Tavern 10? Something like that. Saloon Some, number 10? Yeah, something 10 where Wild Bill Hickok, Hickok. Hickok got shot and killed. But they moved, you know, he got killed in some bar I guess the bar wasn't good enough for tourist stuff, so they've actually <laughs> relocated his death spot down the street to somewhere that I think it's easier to get tourist money. Our hike up to the cemetery. Uh, this is the, I don't know, like the historic cemetery. Mariah? Yeah. Not Mariah. It was uphill. The, mm. the brochures told us, you know, that they picked this uphill location because it was unusable for the town. So we had to park Cupcake down in town and then hike up the hill. Hmm. By the time we got here, we kind of recognized why they considered this to be uh, unusable. It was a hike up. But it'll be all downhill going back. There we go. So let's wander around.
Yeah. It's hard to see when you walk over here. It says, Mrs. Irene Roxy Lane. 22 years and 5 months or 6 months. Here we are at the grave of Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane. She wanted to be buried next to him. I don't really know much about either of them to know why. Apparently she loved him. Over here is Potato Creek Johnny. This guy found a gold nugget somewhere around here. That's one of the largest. It's like seven ounces. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Yeah, so it was like seven ounce gold nugget. So they call him Potato Creek Johnny because apparently he found it in Potato Creek. Maybe his name was John. I don't know. Maybe he liked potato pancakes. Maybe he liked potato pancakes. Do you like potato pancakes? Actually, I really do. Do you? No. Why? They're really heavy. Mm, better than regular pancakes, though. Oh, I like regular pancakes. I don't. Anyways, this is where Wild Bill is buried. Well, it's where he got moved to. <laughs> It's not where he was originally buried, but, you know, it's a tourist town. So we climbed to the top of another hill. Once we got in the cemetery, there was, it's just, it's on hills. So we keep climbing hills, but we saw this particular hill for this guy, Seth Bullock and his wife, Martha. So yesterday we were showing you the Roosevelt Memorial. Roosevelt Tower. Roosevelt Tower. Seth is the one who made that happen. So Seth's request was when he died, he wanted to be buried somewhere where he could see the tower. So you can't see it today, but the tower, right over there. Nice. So there we are. So it's getting cold though. And uh, it's starting. And fog is coming in, also known as snow clouds. So we're going to move our way back down this hill. Here we are at Mount Rushmore on the Avenue of the Flags. And ba ba. The nice thing about traveling when it's a little cold, is you don't have very many people. We saw the parking structure here. A lot of people come here. But for us, no, wide open. behind us, wall drug. We're here in South Dakota along the Badlands. We're trying to navigate our way through this map. This is the actual map of wall drug. Here we are in the restaurant. Big art, big art gallery. I think they're 
promo stuff said they have enough dining space for 500 people here. I think they do. Because there are like three rooms like this at least. But I wanted to have a hot beef sandwich and homemade gravy and mashed potatoes. No, not on the menu. So, we'll eat some lunch and check it out. This real brick? Yeah, it seems like brick. Pretty cool. A little unexpected. Yeah, it's very unexpected. It smells good in here. It smells mm. peaceful. It says this chapel was patterned after a chapel in Dubuque, Iowa built by the Trappist monks in 1850. The stained glass windows came from a church built in the late 1800s at our state capital, Pierre, South Dakota. Beams in both chapels were shaped with an ax. The 33 brands on the candles are in honor of Ward Van Horn, Ward Van Horn, deceased who donated them to the chapel. This is the outdoor, like, I don't know, area you can hang out, take some pictures and do some stuff. Uh, we just finished our lunch. Noelle wanted to come outside. There was something she was really interested in doing. <laughs> I'm riding the jackalope. <laughs> You're riding the jackalope? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. There I am. There you are. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> cupcake because of the sun and that's where Steve and I were just sitting. We got a phone call for his parents. A few more boondockers along the, along the wall. I am super excited to see all this in the morning when the sun is just coming, coming up and shining right on all of it. I think it's going to be beautiful. It already is so pretty good love life we have here this evening i'm trying out a, a new beer this is uh well i should say new to me canyon cream ale last week i tried some kind of sour ipa mm, it's not a hit so this week i seem to have gone the opposite way now i have the canyon canyon cream ale on the side it says ale brewed with local honey it's, uh, Therefore, it's healthy. Oh, I like the way you think. Mm -hmm. 
It does say it's, what is that about the Black Hills? I don't know, grafted in the Black Hills. Yeah, so it's a local beer. So anyway. Local ram- beer, local honey, it's health food. Oh. <laughs> if anyone questions why I love Noel, <laughs> rewind to that. And <laughs> you'll understand our relationship better. <laughs> anyway, we're sitting out here enjoying the sights. Uh, as the sun is thinking about going down. We've got a great fall day here. It's about 60, 65 degrees. Um, this is good. We just came out of a week where we had snow and rain. So I think we're just soaking up the sunshine and enjoying the weather as much as we can.